Because you have to love you. You can't love another person when you don't love yourself. Because a lot of women just wake up and it's like, I got to take care of everybody else. And there's no time for me. One of the problems that a lot of us have is being kind without expecting anything in return. Feminine women are thoughtful women. It's a confidence booster when you're organized. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Fascinating Womanhood channel. On our channel, we talk about everything that has to do with developing femininity and building strong, long-lasting, loving relationships. I am Cherry Lynn, and I'm here with my mom, Dixie Handel and Forsyth. Hi. Hi. Today, we are tackling the topic of five feminine tips that will change your life. A lot of women don't even understand what femininity is, let alone the, the power that women have as women, not masculine power, that can help us not only in, in our interacting with each other, but with our especially with our relationships, particularly with men. And I think this topic is all over the internet. I've seen yeah. so many YouTube influencers, Instagram influencers. A lot of the times when this topic is covered, it's all about appearance, which is great. We love talking about mm -hmm. feminine appearance, but what we want to kind of dive into today is more of the whole package. And of course, there's far more than five tips, but these are our favorite five for us mm -hmm. that we discussed. And then of course, come from your book, Fascinating Womanhood for the Timeless mm -hmm. Woman. You should definitely read if you haven't read it yet. So we'll just sure. jump into the five. First one is understanding the difference. Men and women are not the same. In spite of what you hear, all of us intuitively know we're really quite different from each other. But when you interact with a man, understanding how they think and how they might approach a particular subject compared to yourself is important. And, and so what we, we kind of break that down sometimes into understanding when you listen to him, understand what he means, not just what he says. I think we live in a society where so many people think that men and women are either the same or they should be the same. And I think this one is about how we think differently. And this is so important and it takes so long to learn. But learning to understand him is such a valuable tool on your journey to being more feminine. You know, a lot of uh, people wonder, let's say you get married and you're all excited and you're married the love of your life. And then things start to kind of gradually have problems. A lot of those problems are for most people, I think, are not major. Like he doesn't suddenly have an affair or something like that. What often happens is little things where you misunderstand each other and you end up in arguments and those little things compound. So what we're, we're trying to do to help in Fascinating Womanhood is to help you understand him so that those little things, those arguments don't ever become either big or added to a whole list of more arguments. Yeah, I love that you that you added that it doesn't always start out right away. You marry the love of your life, things are going great. And then usually it's kind of a gradual thing that happens where you don't understand each other. And like, why does that happen? Well, mm -hmm. I think what we're trying to say here is that we're, you just don't understand each other. And as you grow and build your life together, you learn more about each other. But sometimes you don't, with learning about them, you kind of don't really necessarily understand how they think. And that's what we're really that's the point we're trying to drive home here and with each of these points today we wanted to give an example on each one of what this might look like in your everyday so for this first one i'm going to share a recent example of why it's important to understand men so my example is basically something that happens constantly in my family my husband came home the other day very grumpy very tired long day at work i'm sure you can all relate to that so after dinner shortly after dinner he kind of looked at the clock as he usually does, and announced at eight o'clock that it was time for the kids to go to bed. <laughs> well, it's summer right now while we're filming this, and we have an agreement in our family when it's summertime, the kids stay up a little bit later because it's kind of one of their things that they get to do. And I think, you know, he often forgets that when he's tired. <laughs> right, so right. the reason why this is an example of understanding men is in the past, I probably, when I was brand new mom, probably would have scolded him for that. But I was able to get myself into a, into a room with him alone when this happened. I was able to talk to him about the importance to the kids of staying up late and having that balance. And we had a nice chat, really short, and I was able to kind of diffuse the situation and, and help him go to bed early and help the kids stay up. Now, again, I could have just gotten into a giant argument with him and been like, 
you know, you, you're breaking your promises and things like that. But I think part of understanding men is understanding their intent. I think, as you touched on earlier, mm-hmm. looking at this specific scenario, it's important to learn that, you know what? He's just tired. He's just stressed. He had a long day. Did I have a long day too? I actually did. Yes, I did have a long day, but it's not a competition. It's about what can I do to help the situation go smooth, choose your battles and understanding him actually last night, the next day, he was actually a lot more sensitive to me and a lot sweeter to me. I didn't even expect it. And I'm not saying you're always going to get that as a result, but I think that's just an example of understanding him in a really kind of small, subtle way that will make your marriage better. And it will make you feel like a more successful feminine woman. Exactly. That's a, that's a really good example. Feminine women are more confident women. And when you're more confident, you're more charming. As you learn, if you get someone, like you get your husband, like you did, you, you understand, like, I get him, I get where he's coming from. I get what happened. When you are able to get him, then that instantly makes you more charming. See, like you said, even though you had a long day, you can override some of that for the moment because of him. It's like you said, it's not a competition. It's not like, well, I had a long day too. So he has, I have more reason to go to bed than he does. When you understand him, it doesn't bother you so much. And I know there's a lot of women out there that are hearing this and going, oh, well, if I should understand him, he should understand me. Well, that's true. He should understand you. But if you have a guy that doesn't understand you and you're, you refuse to kind of like take that first step to understand him, where does that leave you? Someone has to kind of lead the way. So what we're saying here is if you can try to understand him first, eventually, I really do think he will start to understand you and it may take time. But, um, and, but for me, I mean, it was even the next day in this scenario where I felt like, oh, wow, last night was really paid off. He's a lot, he's really understanding tonight. He just needed that one night. I've been married a lot longer than you. And I would say Bob doesn't understand me as well as I understand him, but it doesn't matter because yeah. He's still sensitive to me. He still wants to please me, even if he doesn't totally always understand why. Um, he still wants me to be happy. And that's that's the ultimate goal. Because Yeah, and all the ladies out there that, that are struggling with this and feeling like, well, my husband doesn't understand me and I'm so frustrated. Just try to look for those small things, like the tiniest things sometimes. Mm-hmm. And him understanding, it may not even be verbal, him you know, making extra effort. I think that is really key. We also wanted to, to touch on, uh, I know you said that this makes you more feminine because it makes you more charming. When you get someone, you're instantly more charming. I love that. I also think too, if this is something that you want more help with, we actually have on our website as well as on our Amazon store, a romantic journal that you can buy. And it's a really wonderful tool to help you understand your man. It's like a fill in the blank kind of style journal where you can record things about him that you admire, that you love. Um, his favorite things. And this could be a really great tool that you could use to just help you learn to understand him better. Well, and also on those those days when you're maybe frustrated with him, you can pull that out and look and remind yourself yeah. of all of why he's so amazing. And, and, you know, a lot of women get a blank journal and they start writing in it, but we've, we've just got, like you said, fill in the blank. Plus it has parts in there where you can put his shoe size, his shirt size. So if you're looking for a gift, it's all right there. And it's small enough. If you don't have a tiny purse, you can put it in your purse. Yeah, I have one and I love it. And it's filled out. And every once in a while, I'll look through it if I'm having a hard time. And it really, it really helps me. So yeah, definitely me recommend you looking at that. Yeah, we made it for ourselves. I just yeah. decided other people might want some. Okay, the second one is protecting your me time. What does this mean? Me time is for those of us women who are so self-sacrificing that we don't always take enough care of ourselves. Some of us do, and we already do this, but time when you need to do something for yourself, and it, it isn't just like taking a bath or things like this. It's, it may be a skin routine. It may be uh, working out, exercising. It may be even something as simple as listening to your favorite music. Mm-hmm. instead of putting on children's music, for example. And it isn't all day long. It's just those where you're actually showing a self-love. And so that's why I say it's not necessarily for those of us who don't have a problem with that. But a lot of us do. A lot of us are so giving and so um, caring for our loved ones that we kind of put ourselves on the back burner. An example of this for me is the simplest little things, like because I struggle with this a lot, is just protecting time for even my doctor's appointments, my dentist appointments. Like, I don't know about you, but 
having small kids and just always being busy and they're in sports and all these things, I feel like I'm always doing their things or things for the mm -hmm. house, for the family. And I think some women kind of wear that with a badge of honor, like, oh, you know, I don't ever have time for myself. And they kind of like are almost subconsciously proud of it. And I think, you know, that makes me kind of sad because you really, it, you really do want to take care of yourself and you want to be a good example to your kids that you take, you know, we take care of you and I take care of me. Um, and it may be as simple as those things, like you said, putting on music, getting a doctor's appointment, but this isn't about pampering, although it could be pampering. I think a lot of the messages out there about this topic of being feminine are about pampering. And I think that's great if you can do it, but the core here, I think that's constantly missing is taking care of your well-being and it's and it's also sometimes difficult i mean our kids my kids are grown yours are not so for me sometimes even now it's hard for me to give myself permission to take a nap and right. when i'm really tired and but there were times when my kids were young i couldn't even if i wanted to what we've learned is that doing enough me time and self-care helps you be more confident because you have to love you. You can't love another person when you don't love yourself. A person cannot love their children actually any more than they can love themselves beyond what they themselves have. So it gives you more. Right. And I love that you touch on that because at the end of each one of these points, I know we really wanted to touch on, well, why does this make you more feminine? And I think you just covered that really well. It makes you more confident. And if you think about your ideal goal of a feminine woman or somebody you maybe admire that's really feminine she probably more than likely is rather confident even if she's shy or introverted she still has a level of confidence and self-esteem and it's really difficult to have that and exude that if you're not taking care of some of those basic mm -hmm. needs and i know it's a challenge i definitely get it it can be so hard like you said you have to give yourself permission to take a nap some of us might not relate to that but i definitely relate to that it's really hard for me to say i'm going to give myself permission to do this for myself. And again, it's some some of us ladies don't have that problem, but a lot of us do. And, and I'm okay. one of them. I think you're one of them. So there's, I'm sure there's <laughs> a of you who yeah. are like that as well. Okay, the third one is spreading kindness. So I know you guys are probably hearing that and thinking it sounds a little obvious and cheesy, but we want to dig into this a little bit deeper because it is just so, so important. It's one of those tips that we have that is more about the inside versus the outside. A lot of us are nice, kind, uh, we're polite to people, let them go in front of us in a line. But one of the problems that a lot of us have is being kind without expecting anything in return. By anything, I mean not even thank you. An example of somebody that I knew that I, it was hard for me to feel like she liked me. I wanted her to like me, I think. And there was a situation where she was sick and her husband was busy. And I told Bob, I'd like to make her uh, some bread and take it over there. And he warned me, he said, that's a great idea. But if you expect, don't expect anything from her, not even thank you. Because if you do, if you do, then you'll have strings attached. And then you might be disappointed. You might be sad. I remember at the time I thought, yeah, you're right. You're right. And I'm glad he told me ahead of time because when I did bring it to her, she actually didn't thank me, but I felt free because I decided beforehand I wasn't going to expect it. And and that was years ago, but I, I've never forgotten that lesson. When you do something kind for someone without any strings, you're free. Then you don't think, well, I did, I've did. i been so nice to this person. I've done A, B, and C for them, and they've never returned the favor. Those are strings. And we yeah. don't really, the strings bind us. How does being kind of going out of your way to be a little more kind, how does that make you more feminine? Because men can be kind. Men can do this. How, how is this different for a woman? Well, it increases your own happiness, your own self-esteem, and your ability to feel more like you can be the real feminine woman that you were born to be. I feel like this one is, is important to men and women, but I think the biggest difference that I've learned from Fascinating Womanhood is that when men go out of their way to be kind and they have that great character building, it kind of almost makes them feel more competent. Mm -hmm. Whereas with women, I think you touched on it. Women, it's more of a freeing thing. And I know that's kind of small, but it, it's kind of, it's actually kind of a big thing. And it's hard to describe and put it towards, but I think all the women out there, if you're listening to this, you're probably going, mm -hmm. yeah, you feel a little bit more free. Well, you know, in Fascinating Womanhood, we talk about femininity, we talk about understanding men, but one of the things we don't talk about as much that's really important is character. And being kind without strings attached develops your character. And the better character you have, the more feminine woman you will be. And it, it doesn't have to be as big as the example you gave as baking someone bread. It could be 
significantly smaller than that. I think the key is whatever you're doing, you don't expect anything. That's the key. <laughs> well, like you did the other night with your husband, you didn't expect him to notice what you did and thank you for it. That's true. That's true. That's like that. Right. <laughs> okay. The fourth one is writing it down. What does this mean? When you write anything down, whether it's a quote, great quote you heard or something, you have a much better chance of remembering it, even if you never look at that paper again, if you lose the paper or whatever. So writing things down helps to organize you. It's a confidence booster when you're organized. I know a lot of people that don't like to keep lists and they're like, oh, I always remember everything. I think a lot of people might kind of shy away from this one in, in terms of productivity, if you're really good at just remembering things. And I think that's great. But if you're not writing things down, keeping daily lists really helps you to be more productive. It helps you to have, as they say, all your ducks in a row. <laughs> I think that that's a feminine woman wants to be organized. They want to be productive. They want to get things done. But even if you are somebody that remembers things and you don't need to write them down, I still have to say writing down birthdays, special events, <laughs> having those things. I mean, you can't possibly remember all that stuff. Maybe you can, but having all of those things written down is so key to being thoughtful. Being and Feminine women are thoughtful women. Um, and it doesn't mean you're perfect and you get everything right all the time, but striving to remember somebody's birthday or remembering a special day for them. I know uh, my husband's grandmother passed away last year and I, I put it in my phone in the calendar because that's what I use. I'm very, very... Um, I'm very dedicated to my phone calendar because it's really easy and it pops up for me. But I wrote that down in the calendar. It's coming up soon. And I, we wanted, I reminded him, hey, I want to do something for your mother for the first anniversary of her mother being gone. Like things like that. It's hard to remember all those things. So if you have them written down, you're more likely to be able to do something about it. Having to remember it is exhausting, I think, at times. And I know with all my family schedules and everything going on, like I like to have everything written down. So I think it's important, even even if you um have it just in your phone, you don't even you don't have to physically write it, but type it. it will really keep you, like we said earlier, more organized, more productive, and feel feel ready for your day. Well, you touched on something really important. I think it isn't just about lists of things to do probably and that is important but you don't and you don't want to miss appointments but an, uh, equally as important is women are the relationship leaders of this world and remembering thoughtful things like people's birthdays or events or things like that not something you do but something you you honor with mm -hmm. a person i remember reading years ago that princess diana kept a stack of thank you notes and always wrote them physical notes not just not a well not a text. And she died before texting was really a huge thing like it is now. But uh, keeping track of those things is part of our charm. I think e this could even be as small as you left to run an errand and you leave a little note. Yeah. It says, be right back. Okay. I like what you bring up about thank you notes, handwritten things, handwritten birthday cards, handwritten invitations to things if you can uh, you know if if you can i think it makes you it makes you more feminine handwritten things represent warmth and um i think that that's great but when it comes to lists i don't think it necessarily has to be handwritten but i think those are the kind no. of those two categories that we wanted to cover okay and then the last one is rise and shine what does this mean i know this is a big one for you this was like the big one that you were like we got to do that one <laughs> getting up and getting yourself organized and ready for the day. Some people bathe at night and some people bathe in the morning. And what, whenever you bathe, you get ready for the day, you make your bed and you're ready for the day. And it enhances your mood. It makes you feel more confident. And if you have trouble, get up maybe a half hour earlier. And that's hard when you've got babies that are up in the night. That's really hard. But I found that, especially with babies, if I didn't get ready, and have it and get ready in the morning sometime sometimes i never did all day and that just wasn't acceptable to me i i didn't feel i mean here here my husband is in a suit and tie and i'm i'm looking like a rag you know and i i didn't i didn't like that I, you know i would never have gone on a date with him looking like that it, it lowers my confidence if i don't feel like i'm ready you know what i mean so, yeah, I think this is a balance of internal and external. I think you've touched a lot on the external part, and a little bit on the internal. Everybody has that different threshold of like, well, I don't need to have makeup on or I don't need to do this. That's fine. Whatever it is that helps you to feel ready for the day and 
for me, that's skincare routine, brushing my hair. Because in the morning, I I can't shower in the morning because I'm up early with kids, like you mentioned. So I'm a I'm an evening shower because <laughs> I work out in the morning too. But the point is, is that you have to make this work for you. You're making your bed, right. I think touched on that. That there's so many studies on how important that is to starting out your day right. It's not just about how the bed looks. It's an it's an internal thing as well really having kind of like a routine, I think is what this is about in the morning that helps you feel ready to to tackle the day. And whatever that is for you, you need to decide what that is for you. But I hope that it includes you taking care of yourself in addition to taking care of others. Because a lot of women just wake up and it's like, I got to take care of everybody else. And there's no time for me. And there's no time, like there's not even a, a mental consideration for yourself. It's all about everybody else. And some of that is is um, when you break it down is actually habit, what you get used to doing. And so you have to deliberately break that habit. Um, for example, I heard a, uh, I think it was a general years ago. He said, <clears throat> if you're going to conquer the world, you're going to start out by making your bed. <laughs> you know, whatever, whatever you're going to do, at least do that. It helps you to be more feminine because a daily routine for yourself boosts your confidence, boosts yeah. your self-esteem. And then if you if you're ready for the day, whether that includes makeup or not, it, it obviously is going to include doing something with your hair and mm-hmm. uh, taking care of yourself, wearing deodorant, all those basic kinds of things. Mm-hmm. You're going to be more confident when a challenge comes up, when uh, say something breaks and you have to run out and do something, you're going to be more confident than if you feel like you, you look like a bomb off the street. You d- and you know, all of us, feel, all of us feel like, Oh no, someone came to the door and I, and I look so terrible. Right. I, I think there's going to be bad days. <laughs> There's going to be days where you fail at this, especially if you have small children. I know there's days where I didn't even get a second to brush my teeth until it's almost lunchtime. And I'm just like, what happened? Yeah. But, <laughs> but the, the goal is here isn't to be perfect. The goal is to strive to have a routine and everybody's routine is different. So just what's your routine? Make sure it includes something that has to do with taking care of yourself. as well. well. Compare the difference. When you do get ready, compare how you feel as compared to when you don't brush your teeth on them. And when you do, you can yeah. work more towards, I like the way I felt when I felt attractive at nine o'clock in the morning instead of like, yeah. All right. All right. That's our list. Um, if you have anything that you want to add that are big tips for helping you feel feminine, we'd love to hear from you down below. And please let us know that you're watching by hitting subscribe and like. It really helps our channel grow when you can hit those buttons for us. And if you haven't read Dixie's book, Fascinating Womanhood for the Timeless Woman, we're attaching that link for that book down below. You definitely have to check that out along with our entire book library. Uh, it will all be attached to this video. We also have a link attached for Dixie's master classes on this video. They were just released. They are 12 lessons that help you learn more about discovering your femininity and building strong, long-lasting, loving relationships in your life. Her master classes were filmed professionally. It's over nine hours of content that you can watch and listen and learn from. And that'll be, as I said, attached to this video as well. Mm-hmm. If you have any other uh, topics you'd like us to cover for future videos, drop those down below as well too. And we'll yes, yes, please do. Yeah. Okay. Bye.